Dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we are talking about antiparasitic drag drugs against cancer. Let's get started. Antiparasitic drugs can really affect cancer cells. We know this. We have a lot of clinical, uh, clinical and preclinical data for now. That is not because as somebody thinks that all the cancer is because of parasites. No, some cancers are because of parasites, but mostly not. If we take cancer cells in their laboratory, no parasites there, just growing cancer cells. We add antiparasitic drugs, they will be killed. Because these drugs can affect the cells, the living cells. They can leave, affect parasites because these are living organisms cons uh, consisting of cells. They can kill tumor which contains of cells also. And they can affect our body, of course, because we also contain of living cells. Can you imagine how difficult it is to uh, develop a new uh, anti-cancer drug? You need to make the celery, you need to develop this drug, you need to uh, study it on cells, on uh, animals, you need to study it on humans to see how it's absorbed, how it's distributed, is it toxic, what are the contraindications, what are the adverse reactions, etc. And it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of years 10 years at least it is much easier to take some drug that is available and redirect it see what if this drug will work against the other diseases because there is no single drug or substance that will affect only one point in our body everything affects many points there are many receptors that are similar in different organs even for example tsh thyroid stimulating hormones thyroid it stimulates thyroid no, not only. That was discovered as a thyroid stimulating, but it can stimulate a lot of receptors everywhere, even in bones or in immune cells. The same here, we take antiparasitic drugs and redirect them onto something else, here onto cancer cells. We have a lot of data now um, that tells us that really it can, they can affect cancer cells in the similar mechanism like they affect parasites, but also some other different mechanisms. What can antiparasitic substances, um, drugs do? And the best thing, we already know a lot of about them. They are already registered. We have a lot of clinical trials. We know the toxic doses. We know how they are absorbed. We know how they are uh, removed from the body. We know what are their, uh, for example, uh, side effects, contraindications. That's why it's very time and money saving to investigate them. We just need to get some additional information. And really, we know that they can induce apoptosis, induce ferroptosis, they can affect autophagy, they can uh, affect mitochondria that are energy producing factories of our cells. If energy is not produced, the cell dies. They can affect the glucose metabolism. Cancer is very dependent on glucose metabolism because cancer is very resistant to low oxygen. Because cancer grows fast, there is often not enough oxygen coming and it needs to survive. In low oxygen conditions, uh, not enough energy is produced because one molecule of glucose without oxygen gives very few amount of energy. But if you have oxygen, it gives a lot. That's why in this uh, hypoxic condition, low oxygen conditions, uh, the cancer cells will need a lot of glucose to function, to grow. Antiparasitic drugs, like for example artemisinin, can affect this process in uh, cancer cells. The anti-cancer activities are already studied in many types of cancers, uh, including leukemias, lymphomas, colon cancer, breast cancer, gliomas, etc. And artemisinin will decrease the resistance of tumors to low oxygen. What if we combine this artemisinin uh, with um, our some techniques like TACE, like uh, transarterial chemoembolization. We put the catheter through the blood vessel, we go to the tumor blood vessel that feeds the tumor with blood, and we clog it. In general, this procedure is um, often not very effective because tumor has a lot of other small blood vessels, for example, and it's very resistant to low oxygen. Uh, but if we use, for example, artemisinin, it will decrease the resistance of tumor to low oxygen. It, it can uh, theoretically improve uh, their 
effectiveness of this method. We just need to investigate it. Unfortunately, there are some problems with artemisinin and its derivatives because uh, when we inject it, its uh, effective concentration falls very fast and uh, its concentrations will drop dramatically um, after 20 minutes already. That's why it's not enough time to act well on tumor. In general, in clinical trials, 18 mg per kilo um, of artemisinin was quite well tolerated. Uh, they injected it on day 1, then day 8, and then day 15 is already um, free day. And then again, day Y, day 8. Like uh, cycles in chemotherapy. Or uh, it can be given uh, through mouse in dosage 200 mg per day. Among complications, mostly it's anemia, but it's quite well controlled, not very severe. And it can be some uh, toxicity to neural system, especially to ear. So it can cause some mild hearing loss or some uh, lightheadedness, I mean vertigo, like dizziness. Uh, there are actually phase 2-3 uh, trials on uh, cancer patients with colon cancer uh, using artemisinin together with uh, conventional treatment but we still don't have any results. And uh, the scientists are working on developing new forms to improve its uh, delivery to tumor. Wish best of luck for the scientists. And let's go to the next drug. It's um, albendazole. We know that albendazole is quite well tolerated. Even the dosage is uh, up to 2.4 grams per day are considered to be quite safe. And most important, we reach effective concentrations in blood. Similar concentrations what we got in uh, our preclinical studies, without any severe toxicity. This is very important. Fortunately, uh, there are no clinical trials with albendazole now, but there are clinical trials with its brother, mebendazole. Good thing, it's also well tolerated and it also reaches good concentrations in plasma. But all the clinical trials nowadays are still recruiting and still no results are available. Let's wait. By the way, most clinical trials, they Focus on brain tumors. One more, Ivermectin, very popular uh, remedy, very popular antiparasitic and against COVID many uh, doctors recommend it. It's well tolerated, it's quite safe and uh, we can reach good concentrations also. Unfortunately, no clinical trials available for now. But we have a lot of clinical trials of chloroquine and its derivatives. It's anti-malarial drugs. For example, one trial where 30 patients with glioblastoma multiforma took part, uh, it showed that uh, combination with uh, usual, with conventional therapy, improves their survival. There is one more clinical trial go going on now. They uh, study temozolomide or uh, radiation therapy plus this drug, but there are no results available yet. Niclosamide, other drug, uh, antiparasitic, it can affect mitochondria, their energy producing sub uh, components of our cells if there is no energy the cell dies unfortunately that can affect our muscles especially cardiac muscle especially our heart that's why uh, we are concerned about uh, the toxicity to the heart also uh, there is a clinical trial that says that 500 milligrams three times a day is quite well tolerated but uh, we have some problems with concentrations only one third of patients uh, achieved uh, good concentrations like we saw in preclinical studies that showed that it really helps against tumors. That's why scientists are struggling with uh, improving its delivery to tumors now and protecting with of, uh, protecting of heart. Nitazoxanide is another um, drug. Uh, there is a clinical trial ongoing now, but we still have no results. In conclusion, I can say that most likely uh, if we use these drugs as a single remedy, it won't uh, give us a lot of effect. But they all will uh, affect tumor and they all will decrease its resistance to our conventional treatment methods. That's why combinations must be very promising. We just need to study it and to understand which doses are needed, how to uh, inject them, for example, how to combine with conventional drugs. Uh, what tumors will be more, sen more sensitive to these drugs. That's why let's wish uh, a lot of luck to our scientists and hope we will get a lot of good data in future. And as for me, they should uh, study albendazole, mebendazole and ivermectin first because you see they are not really very toxic and uh, you can achieve good concentrations 
uh, without any problems. That's why they would be the easiest to use in uh, clinical practice. You don't need nanoparticle or special technologies. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. I wish you all best. Good luck. God bless you. Bye-bye.